Where they're cotton. What? You know parlors. No, we don't bury them. We insure them. Nancy Tilton. Red-headed girl with brown eyes. No, they're blue. Why, George, I never thought gray. Why, they're brown. Better make up your mind. Brown eyes do go with red hair, don't they? So I've been told. Regulation curves and pretty dimples. What more could a man ask for? I'm hardly qualified to answer. Answer what? The question. Oh, I must have been talking out loud. That's dangerous. They have state institutions which had itself for people who do that. <laughs> Uh-oh. I see Don's giving the new girls a once-over already, huh? How to call him New Deal Don. What do you mean, New Deal Don? Well... Every new face is a new deal for him, and a raw deal for Trixie. Pretty cute redhead at that. She's in the cab. I tipped her off about the job. Tip her off about me. I hope I've got a chance for the job. Bit top money you'll get. Dwight has a keen eye. Always falls for redhead. Miss Hilton, Mr. Dwight will see you now. Right this way. Your turn. Give him the work. Right. You uh, sit down, please. Well, <clears throat> name is uh, Nancy. Well, that's something in these uh, days of uh, Maxine, Trixie, Gwendolyn. It's uh, rather refreshing to run up against an old-fashioned name like that. <clears throat> Are you uh, any relation to the uh, Tiltons here in Chicago? Yes, uh, that is distant, maybe. <clears throat> I see you worked two years for the uh, J.B. Cass Company in uh, Strongpoint. Yes, sir. Weren't you satisfied there? Oh, yes, but I wanted to come to Chicago. I thought I'd have better opportunity here. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Of course, of course. Oh, <clears throat> do you ever use uh, an Ediphone? Oh, yes, sir, quite often. Miss uh, McIntosh, please. <clears throat> uh, did you bring any references with you? Why, I... Uh, oh, oh, never mind that, never mind that. Uh, the name Tilton is recommendation enough. But I... I'm going to give you a trial. Your salary will be $125 a month. And, oh, uh, Miss McIntosh, Miss uh, Tilton is going to work for us. You'll just dismiss the other applicant. Yes, Mr. Dwight. Uh, this way, uh, Miss Tilton. Miss Lane, uh, Miss Tilton is going to uh, take Miss Robinson's place. <clears throat> uh, Albert. Uh, yeah, yes, sir. You have some of Mr. Walton's telephone records? Yes, sir. Uh, you'll get them and give them to Miss Tilton? Yes, sir. I'll, I'll be. You might show her around for a few days until she gets used to the routine. I'll be very glad to. Thank you. I hope you'll be very happy with us here, Miss Tilton. Thank you. I'm Trixie Lane. And I'm Nancy Tilton. Come on. Your station's right in the firing line. Full view of the enemy. Old frozen face is a firm believer of perpetual motion. <clears throat> he seems to be very nice. Oh, he'd be all right if he'd get over the idea of the typewriters or machine guns. <laughs> Every time one stops pounding, he's right on the job with a fresh round of ammunition. <laughs> oh, Dave, come here a minute. You two ought to get acquainted. Miss Tilton, meet Mr. Walton. How do you do? Or should I say, uh, Nancy, meet Dave? Mr. and Miss, that sounds rather formal, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Well, I'm glad that's settled. Well, I'll be leaving you before I'm court-martialed. See you later. Hello. right when I told you you'd get the job, wasn't I? Seems that you were. Hmm. Dwight can't resist a pretty redhead. Why, there doesn't seem to be any others here. If I ever have the hiring to do in this place, I'll specialize in them. Good idea, Dave? I didn't think the color of the hair made any difference to you. Why, I've always been partial to redheads. I 
think my name had more to do with getting the position than the color of my hair. Did you notice Don Blair making a big place for the new girl? The new redhead certainly has Don buzzing like a bee. Sixty sure is burned up. And that redhead started the fire. Don is taking that new dame like Grand Duke Richmond. Better get ready to pay Don's life insurance when Trixie gets to him. Better watch out, Trixie. Don will be kidnapped right in front of your eyes. I'll be tooting at eight. They'll go places and do things. That's what you think. Don't worry. I'll be seeing you. Forget. I'll bet Trixie tells that Tilton dame what's what. I'll bet you're right. Oh, ready to leave? Mm, just about. Doing anything tonight? Nothing special. How about dissipating? I know a swell place where we can get spaghetti and red wine for 50 cents. Mm, some other time I'd love to, but not tonight. You see, I'm free and I don't know what to do with myself. Known Don Long? Don. Don Blair. He said he toot for you at eight. Oh, is that his name? Today is the first time I ever saw him. Ever hear of Don Juan? Certainly. In Casanova? Of course. A girl hasn't heard of the world's two greatest lovers. Don Blair is the perfect combination of both. So whenever you feel yourself getting foolish about him, remember that. Mm. You've aroused my curiosity. He's beginning to sound very interesting, this Don of yours. Oh, I thought perhaps you'd think so. That's why I'm going to let you in on a little secret. There's a no trespass sign on it. Mm. That makes him more interesting than ever. Well, uh, don't say I didn't warn you. Remember, he's my property. So lay off. Enjoying yourself? Every minute of it. You're glad you came? Uh-huh. But I didn't really intend to. Oh, I knew you would. Oh, you're quite sure of yourself, aren't you? Not only of myself. Your egotism is really amazing. Are all men like you? Like me? Well, there's probably a great many. But perhaps on second thought, not so many. Modesty isn't one of your failings, is it? I've been congratulating myself all evening that you're with me. You'd better make the most of it, because usually once I make up my mind to do a thing, all the king's horses and all the king's men... You couldn't put Humpty Dumpty together again? Is that what you intended saying? You have two more guesses. You know, I've been warned about girls like that. And I've been warned about men like you. Like me? Yes, with a reputation. Reputation? What do you mean? A little bird whispered to me. Oh. Was it a blonde little bird? What gave you that idea? Are you going to tell me you're one of these modern businesswomen, hard-headed and stubborn? Maybe I am. But right now, I'm going to take a look at your watch, and if it's as late as I think it is, you ought to put me in your car and take me home. All right. Waiter, check, please. Being Saturday afternoon, my lady, you think we should romp on the beach and dump the body. That's a swell idea. And we'll give the boys a treat. The absent treatment he's been giving you for the last two weeks hasn't cured you, has it? Can't understand why he acts that way. Absence makes the heart grow fonder for somebody else. Why don't you give him some of his own medicine? Sitting in a corner every night will only get you a dunce cap, and that won't make Don notice you. The next time Dave asks you to go out with him, go. Uh, Mr. Walton wants to see you, Nancy. Use your noodle and stop being a hermit. I beg your pardon. Did you want me? Oh, uh, Miss Tilton. Do you happen to have an engagement this afternoon? Why, uh, no. 
I've some pretty important stuff to get out, if you wouldn't mind helping me. Glad to. Oh, thank you. Get out R. W. Ingram's card, please. Uh, <coughs> uh, this policy is for ten thousand dollars. Yes. Expires July fifth. Let me see if we can't get a renewal. You attended to that a few days ago. Oh, uh, I did. Yeah. Well, what's the matter with me? Um. Ah, oh, here's one we'll have to go after. James A. Gordon. That's for uh, 25,000 liability. Oh, we'll have to get right after that. This card shows he renewed the policy two days ago. Oh, really? Oh. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Uh, uh, oh, will you make a note to have me call Gallagher about that accident first thing Monday morning? Is there anything wrong with the letter you dictated this morning? Oh, oh, yes, yes. What happened to that? I don't seem to have seen it anywhere. It went out in the noon mail. Copies on your desk. Oh, oh. oh. Yes, yes, here it is. Here. <laughs> it's right here all the time. <laughs> Did you play tennis? Not really, but I'd like to learn. Oh, it's a grand game. Watch out now. How's that? Try to return, Nancy. doing anything tonight? Nothing special. Well, I propose a show or a ride or the country club. They're all good. I can't make up my mind. Well, then I'll do it for you. Let's go to a show and then ride out to the country club. Fine. All good things come in three, don't they? <laughs> Hello. Yes? A gentleman from Miss Kelton? Tell him she'll be right down. Who was it? There's a man downstairs. I told him you'd be right down. Who is it tonight? Dave, but I didn't expect him until 8.30. You know, honey, Dave's a kind of a fellow for a girl to like. He's dependable. Too many girls are crazy about Don. And I don't believe he cares much for any of them. At least it's a matter of religion, isn't it? Maybe, but that roving Romeo doesn't believe in anybody. Are you still mooning about him? Not exactly, but I like him a lot. Take my advice and forget him. All he'll ever give you is a Yale key. A Yale key? Oh, skip it. If you'd only speak English, I might understand. I mean, you'll never offer you anything that goes with Mendelssohn's music. You'll never hear him say, I do, for better or for worse, or until death do us part. Don't be too sure about that. If I think he feels toward me the way I feel toward him, I'll be as easy to get rid of as a birthmark. That must be Dave. Have a good time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bring you back in time. Honest, I will. 
Is that a promise? You know, I really shouldn't do it. Thanks for the lift, old man. Think they'll know what's wrong? Sure, that's their business. You reckon and they fix them? Something like that. You know, I can't understand what happened to the car. The motor was running perfectly. One of the cylinders is missing. Hmm. You probably threw a couple more of them away when I wasn't looking. Out of gas, mister? Nothing as simple as that. This is serious. First we lose one cylinder and then two or three more. Oh, have you a phone? Right inside, miss. To the right. Stall for a couple of minutes. One of the cylinders is missing. I get you. You didn't wait? No, and I'm sorry. So am I for spoiling your evening. Oh, you haven't, Don, but I hate to disappoint Dave. He's been so nice to me. Dave Walton? Yes. I'm sure he'll understand when you tell him what happened. And I hope so. I'm sure he will. Everything's all right, mister. Thanks. Thank you. Well, all set? Am I presentable? Let me see your eyes. Well, the right one looks serious. Ah, but the left one has a twinkle. <laughs> now that my eyes have passed inspection, how about my lips? That's not what I mean. I want to know if I've got them on straight. Well, now let me see. I wouldn't say they're straight, and I wouldn't say they're round. Mm. They're not too large and they're not too small. That's perfect. And you're gorgeous. I love you when you're silly. Am I to take that letter in? Of course not. Not any of it? Well, maybe. The first part? Yes. And the last? No. <laughs> We've got the whole evening before us. Get to dance for a while? I'd love to. Mind if I pass by home and change my clothes? Not at all. we in the right house? Yes, but I've just gotten an inspiration. I'll toss a coin. Heads we dance, tails we swim. Jane? After seeing how conveniently you lost the cylinder this evening, I think I'd better make sure this isn't a two-headed quarter. All right. You do the topping. Close your eyes. Here goes. What are you up to now, Don? Oh, uh, Mother, this is Nancy. Uh, Nancy Tilton. She's with us at the office. We have some friends here. I should like them to meet you. Hello, Mrs. Ray. Delighted. Mr. Ray. Very glad to know you. And Alan. The good old standby. <laughs> the pleasure is all mine. Mr. and Mrs. Van Alden. How do you? Uh, Mr. Cameron and Miss Haviland. How do you? Do? Miss Tilson. Sure you wouldn't like to play a couple of hands? Oh, no, we're going out in a few moments. But I would like to watch for a while if I won't be in the way. Certainly. I promise to be as quiet as a mouse. Didn't I understand, Don, to say your name is Tilton? Yes, Nancy Tilton. My dear, the resemblance is remarkable. Are you by any chance related to the Chicago Tilton? Of course she is. Why, she's the very picture of her grandmother. Ooh. When do you expect her back? Mrs. Tilton is your grandmother, isn't she? Certainly she is. Can't you see she has the same delightful auburn hair? <laughs> I would think you'd be in Europe with the family right now, my dear. But then I suppose you're like all modern girls. I... I want to look after myself. Do you really enjoy it? Working, I mean. Uh, yes, I get a real thrill out of it. Keep away. Why, you look bored to death. I am. Uh, I'm going to have to a mm -hmm. double. Oh, 
why didn't you tell me that Nancy was one of the Chicago Tildens, Don? Why, I didn't know she was. What are you, a little princess in disguise? I must tell Father who Nancy really is. Oh, no, please. You see, I want to work. I want to hold my position. Does your grandmother object? Not as long as there isn't any publicity. You tell her she's not to worry. I intend looking after you. She'll remember me. Uh, Mrs. Anthony Blair. Remind her that I had charge of one of her booze at the charity ball. When I write, I'll surely mention it. These people are trying to play bridge down, and we're only holding up the game. <sighs> All right. We'll run along. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Have a good time. Children. Mm. Just the opportunity she's been looking for. All we'll hear from now on is, uh, Nancy said this, Mrs. James Tilton said that. <laughs> you know, I can tell by the determined look in Mother's eyes she's getting ready to give you a party. Give me a party? I don't want a party. Oh, but the opportunity is made to order for Mother. Just think of the prestige she'll gain by entertaining one of the Tiltons. Oh, they're in Europe. Let them stay there. You haven't quarreled, have you? No, but I'm on my own now and enjoying my work. I'm glad you like your work. I'll try and make it pleasant. <laughs> we'll hop in and be off to the races. Hello. Just thought I'd join the party and make it a threesome. Would you like to offer me a cigarette? I haven't had one for hours. How about a light? You know, they haven't perfected these things since they burn of their own accord. What's the idea, Trixie? What are you doing here? And to think that I actually fell for the phony promises you made about not seeing her again. Nancy, please don't pay any attention. Better be careful. There's someone else here who knows you pretty well. Oh, Dave. Come over here and make this a foursome. Ah, snooping again. Call it that if you like. I suppose you're here to shield my feelings and protect Miss Lane. Not at all. My real reason for being here was to try and save Miss Tilton, an annoyance of this sort. If he hadn't been with me, I'd have busted right in there. And don't think I wouldn't. Will you please take me home, Dave? I really owe you an apology for butting into that mess. You'll never know how glad I was to see you. I meant to get back in time to meet you. Oh, that's all right. I'm sorry. More sorry than you know. As soon as I could, I got to a telephone and called the house. I understand. Will you forgive me? Please. I can't do otherwise when you ask me like that. And you will ask me out again sometime? Oh, yes, I'll ask you out again. Hmm, you don't sound very enthusiastic. Well, of course, Miss right, I guess. Somehow I wanted you to like me. I do a lot. You sound bitter. Not at all like the real you. If you want me to, I'll tell you what I didn't say. Shall I? I love you. I have ever since that first day I met you at the office. I'm sorry, Dave. You do understand. All I want is for you to be happy. If that depends on me, I... Good night, Nancy. Nancy Tilton and Mr. Walton. What's the big idea of you two staying up so late? I'm surprised at you. Oh, I just left Johnny and we had more fun. Good night, buddy. Good night. We you won't forget your promise. I won't forget. Good night. Then we went to the show and the dance and we had... Nancy. What is it? Not going to be red nail polish? None here. I think there's some in my old suitcase in the closet. Okay, thanks. I think you'll find it on the top shelf. Oh,
Did you find it? Absolutely. I've got a bone to pick with you. What's the big idea holding out on me? What in the world are you talking about? Nancy Lucas and John Hilton. Hmm. He must be red-headed, too. Not quite the same shade for the can L boy that it's yours. Usually when two redheads get together, the fur begins to fly. Don't be silly. <laughs> You get a handful of yours, too? Take a look at the date. It's my mother's. The hair's my father's, not mine. Everyone at the office thinks you're one of the Chicago Chilton. Oh, I know. But I looked the family up in who's who, and the Chicago Chiltons are all lawyers. Always have been. My dad was a civil engineer. There's one thing you want to remember in this town. It's not who you are, but who they think you are. If those chumps at the office believe you're related to the Tiltons, let them. It won't do them any harm, and it might help you. Mother would have told me before she died if we were related. She and Father separated before I was born. Gosh, I'm sorry, Nan. It's all right, buddy. Come on, come on, come on, girls, come on. Not angry about last night, are you? Should I be? Oh, I don't know. I thought you might resent my taking Don away from you. Did you take him away? What do you think? I thought I left him with you. Don't let's quibble over words. There's really no sense quibbling over anything. I'm glad you're giving me an opportunity to speak my mind. Don likes you. That's interesting. I... You needn't deny it. He almost admitted it to me himself last night. I wasn't going to deny it. I was going to say, I like him too. Quite a coincidence, isn't it? It may seem so to you, but not to me. Del and I are engaged, and we're going to be married. So, because he's engaged to you, he doesn't dare speak to any other girl. Is that what you mean? Exactly. I warned you that first day, and I'm warning you again. If you don't leave him alone, you're going to be sorry. Mr. Blair wants you to write this record before you go to lunch. There's only one letter on it. Which Blair? Not the one that signs your paycheck. Queen's messenger reporting for duty. Here are some valuable documents that must be delivered before noon. Hmm. I'll do it or die in the temperature, Majesty. You have five minutes. If you don't loiter with the ladies of the court, no need to die. You can depend on me, Your Highness. Thanks for the flowers, Al. Oh, that's all right. I'm glad you like them. They're lovely, but you shouldn't squander your money that way. I don't. You get them from your garden? No. One of the slaps in the accounting department brings them in every day for Macintosh. And you help yourself, I suppose. Well, I'll leave a couple for her. She doesn't know the difference. You think that's the right thing to do? You're not going to snitch, are you? No, I won't snitch. You're a regular gal. Wait till you see the ones I have for you tomorrow. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. My goodness. Aren't we the regular men about town? The boutonniere and varnished hair? Say, you know, you'd look real swell if you had on striped trousers and a frock coat and carried a cane. Yeah, and you'd look real swell to me in a wooden kimono holding a lily in your hand. Says you.
Now all you have to do is set the date. Set the date? My God, I didn't know. That you've written exactly what I've been trying to get up the courage to tell you? But you don't understand. Oh, yes, I do. Here's the evidence. You mean uh, you love me? If you haven't known it in the past couple of weeks, my belief in woman intuition is completely shattered. Then you want to marry me? You know all the answers. Why bother about the question? Time out for lunch. Let's go. Lunch? I'm not hungry. I'm too happy. Oh, please. You know, Miss Chilton, whenever anything of this sort happens, it is necessary to treat all the employees alike. Of course. I knew you'd understand. I do. <clears throat> if uh, any person can give information about this theft, I will appreciate it if they will stop at my desk and do so. The uh, guilty person will be dealt with leniently. If he confesses immediately, of course, it will be impossible for this person to remain in the employ of the company, but the management will permit him to resign quietly if the purse is returned. But if we can't deal with this situation ourselves, we intend calling the police. A search will be made of the lockers. It is no more than fair that you should all be present when this is done. You may go. You may go, and uh, you men, uh, go on with your work. Come on, make it snappy, girl. Make it snappy. All right, snappy, little girl. Please go back to work quietly. Don't let us have any discussion of this occurrence in the office or out. Does any of you know anything further about this purse? Come to me. Where did you find it? Right there on the typewriter. I'm, I'm sure I don't know how it got there. This is absurd. Naturally, I don't suppose the Tilton would do a thing of that sort. Miss Tilton had nothing to do with this. She just came back to the office a minute ago. We were talking in the corridor. Why, she was the last one in here. Well, the purse certainly couldn't walk out of Betty's desk and jump onto the typewriter. Mm -hmm. I'll say it couldn't. Somebody planted it there to get Nan or I mean Miss Tilton into trouble. Well, if you had looked thoroughly, I wouldn't doubt your word, but you didn't. But I'm sure if it was there, I'd have seen it. I'm sure I would, Mr. Dwight. <clears throat> Anyhow, who'd be dumb enough to pinch something and then show it to everybody in the joint? <laughs> your logic is very excellent, young man. I can't say the same to your English. <clears throat> have you any explanations to make, Miss Tilton? 
When I saw the person heard Alice say it was Betty's, I was... Well, I was petrified. And you don't know how it got on your desk? Of course she doesn't. No, of course she doesn't. That will be all for the present. You girls get back to work. <clears throat> You'll come over to my desk for a few minutes, Don. I'll be right with you. I promise you won't worry your pretty little head about this affair. I'll try not to. Now remember, no backsliding. Well, well. So my wandering boy has come home at last. Am I a wanderer? And is this home? It could be. Forget it. Why don't you come clean with me? Haven't I always been on the level with you? What about that first business? Have a drink? Don't feel the need just now. Ready to tell me the story about that jumping purse? Don't you know enough to take a hint? Sorry. This must be one of my dull nights. Maybe I could brighten you up. That's possible. Suppose you try by talking. You walk in here without even time for a kiss and start in asking questions. You think that's nice? Would that make you talk any easier? Suppose you try and find out. Gee, I must be hard to take. Quite the contrary. I can't think of anything easier. What put the idea into your head that I knew anything about that first? If anything takes place in that office that you don't know about, well, it just hasn't happened. So what? Well, I thought I left my pipe around here, but I guess I didn't. How about a light? So you're getting real sloppy about Nancy. You may call it that. And uh, just when did you make up your mind that you loved her? That isn't important, is it? I suppose your blood pressure began to rise when you found out that her grandmother was the Mrs. James Tilton. Maybe. Think she'd marry you if she knew about your father? She knows. Ever stop to think that her family might object? That's the bridge that still has to be crossed. But I don't think I'll have any trouble doing it. For a long while, I thought that ours was one affair that would end differently. But after all, what's love? We have had fun together. We can have lots more. Says Don Blair. Well, here's wishing you more luck than I've had. But remember, you will never get a chance to marry Nancy Tilton. Because I think I can present it. Hello, dear. I've been trying to reach you all evening. Oh, I'm sorry. I came in about 20 minutes ago. Listen, dear. There's some wonderful news in it. Your father and grandmother are in New York. Mrs. Tilton gets home Monday. Yes. Yes, I understand. Mrs. Tilton will be in Chicago Monday. Certainly, Mrs. Blair. I'll... I'll be glad to bring her over. Any relation to the uh, Tilton here in Chicago? Are you by any chance related to the Chicago Tilton? Your engagement to Nancy must not fall through, Doc. Don't worry, it won't. You're marrying a Tilton. It means a great deal to me. You mean I'd have Nancy and practically be one of the Tiltons? Exactly. You haven't changed a bit, have you? But where are you going? Over to Nancy's, to make sure that neither of us will be disappointed. 
Hello, buddy. Just got in town. Bought a surprise Nancy. Can I put you aside for sore eyes? Why? Nancy's gone. Gone? Where? Back to her old job. Why? I don't know. She left in a hurry. Said she was going home. Where's that? Oh, in some little dinky town. A uh, port. A uh, port. Uh, oh, gosh. A uh, uh, strong port. That's it. Strong port. Strong port. Mm -hmm. When? How? Union Pacific bus, 1115. Thanks. Where's that redhead? Take yourself right at home, my dear. Well, oh, come on, come on. Where is she? And to what do I owe the pleasure of this call? Listen, mouthpiece, cut out the smart act. Where's that dame? Well, my dear, I do believe you're just a bit late. That dame and her lord just left on a small trip called the honeymoon. Isn't that just too ducky? Yeah, it's ducky, all right. But little Trixie will kill the goose and there'll be no golden eggs. Oh, no, you won't. You can never reach Strongport in time. Strongport? Thanks, Dumbbell. That's all I wanted to know. Strongport, take the main highway and step on it. Yes, Just a minute, just a minute. Hey, lady, you asked for speed. Here he is. Talk to him. Oh, but please, don't please, sir. let me deal with the driver. Let me see your driver's license. I was only following orders. Oh, please hurry. Calvin Highball. Do you know? You have to have that? No. There's only two things I've got to have. You know what they are? A drink and another drink. Please, Don, you're drinking too much. 
Well, look who's here. And how did you get here? Well, lady, I flew. And how did you know we were here? Why, a little bird told me where I'd find your car park. Sure enough. Yeah, well, you say you're glad to see little Trixie? How about you, Don? Make a flowery speech. Say it's a surprise and a pleasure to see me. Oh, come on, please do. It's a surprise and a pleasure. You wondering how I knew you were here? As a matter of fact, I didn't until just now. She tried to run away from me. Can you imagine that, Trixie? Can you beat that? She wanted to go back to the town she came from. But I fooled her. Now, we're going together. Off on a honeymoon? Yes, we're driving to Strongport. Congratulations. You deserve to be happy. Don, don't you think we'd better go? Oh, not before you offer me a bite or something to drink. That wouldn't be hospitable, would it? Had a girl, Trixie. You're a good sport. We'd order some wine and celebrate. Oh, great. As long as my name wasn't written in your card. We'll drink to what the future holds in store for us. Don't you think we'd better go down? Cordon Rouge, vintage 1926. How does that sound? Just what the doctor ordered. Please, let's go. Ah, oh, don't be like that, Nancy. Sit down and be sociable. Don, I'm leaving. Are you going to stay here, or are you going to come with me? Why don't you do as Don says, and be sociable? Yeah, sit down and be sociable. Shall I order the wine? Sure thing. We're going to celebrate. I don't care to be insulted. Are you coming with me, or are you going to stay with her? Yes. Choose between us. Take your choice. Oh, this is very, very dramatic, Don. Yeah, Nancy. Don't get dramatic. It's too tiresome. Uh, Nancy! Nancy! Hello. Yes, this is Mrs. Cass. Long distance. Uh, just a moment, please. Oh, Nancy. Oh, Nancy. Yes, Mrs. Uh, long distance is calling you. Thank you. Hello? Yes? What's that? Don't tell anybody I was with you Sunday. You've got to do this for me. Well, I don't understand. You've got to trust me. I can't explain right now. You mean... We're from police headquarters in Chicago. We'd like to talk to this young lady in here alone. Very well. Promise me, please. All right. I promise. What are you promising? Who's that you were talking to? A friend. Check that call. Hello, operator. This is Thomas, Chicago Police talking. Trace that last call. Report to the South Street Police Station in Chicago. You're Nancy Tilton? Yes, sir. Work for Blair Bennon Company? I did. Sure your right name is Tilton? Why, of course. Any relatives in Chicago? Distant ones. Who are these people you're staying with? Old friends. My grandparents lived here before they died. I thought that Tilton Duchess on Lakeshore Drive in Chicago was your grandmother. I had two grandmothers. You're positive of that? Certainly. Read that, sister. Maybe you won't be so positive. Got anything to say? Get your hat and coat. You're going back to Chicago. The DA wants to talk to you.
splashed all over the front page, ain't you? No small town stuff about you. It isn't my fault I'm here. Covering someone? What do you mean? Who's the man? Man? It's a cinch no woman would go to jail for another woman. It ain't in the cards. Phone him. Tell him enough he springs you within two hours, he'll spill the work. He must know I'm here. Take a tip from me and jack him up. If you don't, you're liable to be in here for months. It's a cinch to get in these jails, but it's hard to get out. I ought to know. I've been in jails from San Francisco to New York, and none of them's any good. All right, Tilton. Come on. A bond's been put up for you. A bond? Bail. Come on, hurry. The man's waiting. Who is he? Well, his name is Walt. Walt... Uh, Walt something or other. Walton? What do you care what name he's using? You're getting out, ain't you? Come on. Let's go. So long, kid. Why are you so willing to take my part when I seem so ungrateful, so unable to help myself or you? You know the reason. You mean you still care? I'll always care. Even after knowing what I've done? You had a lot of fun pretending to be a Tilton, didn't you? My name really is Tilton. I only allowed them to think Mrs. Tilton was my grandmother. It was a foolish thing to do, wasn't it? Why did you do it? It just happened. Everyone seemed to take it for granted that I was one of the Chicago children, and I didn't deny it. Well, that little pretense is apt to make trouble for us. We'll manage somehow. Will Mrs. Tilton be with the district attorney at the office this afternoon? Hardly. The police are only concerned with the robbery. For the moment, you're free. And it's going to be my job to keep you that way. Do you mean there'll be a trial? And all those questions the men asked me last night in jail will be asked again? I'm afraid so. Unless you tell them where you were and with whom you were on Sunday. You excuse me, please. Certainly. I'll be right back. Hello, Don. Didn't I tell you I couldn't talk over the phone? I can't afford to be caught seeing you or talking to you. But I didn't know Kitty my promise would get me into such serious trouble. You in serious trouble? Why, look what you've done to me. Why, your pretense has made me the laughing stock of all my friends. Mr. District Attorney, ask the watchman. Know this girl? Yes, sir. When did you see her last? Sunday morning. What time? A few minutes before 11. You don't deny stopping here in the office before getting on the bus for Strongport? No, sir. Well, what were you doing here? I had something to attend to. Do you work these girls on Sundays, too? No, no, no. Such a thing is utterly preposterous. You know you had no business here. It was something personal. What? Think fast, young lady. I can't say. Was she alone? Yes, sir. What makes you so sure it was 11 o'clock when Miss Tilton was here? I think I can answer that. All right, go ahead. 
Send in the watchman's time clock, please, right away. You'll find it on my desk. <clears throat> you say this is the room in which you were attacked? Yes, sir. That's correct. I found him here, 7 o'clock in the morning, bound and gay. How come you happen to be here so early? I thought the heads of an organization usually got to their offices about 11 o'clock. Well, <clears throat> how could I be efficient if I didn't get down in time to see when the people that I employ get to work? Oh, I see. Hmm. I told him where to find you. Did he meet the boss? Did you tell him all about it? A uh, young lady, uh, may I trouble you for that time clock? Oh, it's no trouble at all, Mr. Dwight. Did he marry you? Are you a bride? Did he... Who is this he you're talking about? Did you want me? Just a minute. I asked you, young lady, who is this he you're talking about? The boy. Whose boyfriend? Nancy. What's his name? At Kerr. Hmm. You're not quite as dumb as you look, are you? I'm sorry I can't say the same for you. <laughs> <laughs> for the tenth time, you're fired. For the tenth time, I quit. There are the reports you wanted. You'll find everything there. This will prove conclusive. Never mind that. Now, you're the only employee in that entire Blair organization who hasn't been quite honest with us. Is this the man who took you off the bus? I told you last night he wasn't. Where were you, Sunday? I was with my father all day and evening. <laughs> Don, that's utterly ridiculous. AMD sailed for Europe Saturday. I didn't mean him. I meant my own father. His own father robbed the firm ten years ago of fifty thousand dollars. He was sent to the penitentiary for twenty years. Well, that lets him out. If he's in the big house, he couldn't have anything to do with it. Oh, but he's out. He was paroled from Joliet two weeks ago. You know the combination of the vault with the securities that kept, don't you? Certainly. What about it? You and this Tilton dame engineered the job from the inside for your father. I did not. You're lying. You weren't with your father any time on Sunday. You were with Miss Tilton. I was not. Weren't you with Don on Sunday? Yes. Why? That's ridiculous. No, it isn't. This is the man that took Miss Tilton off the bus. They were together all afternoon and stopped for dinner at a tavern. She left him there. It's her word against mine. And under the circumstances, I don't see where there's any doubt of who's telling the truth. She's been proven a fraud and a liar. Hey, cut out the rough stuff. Hello? Blake? Yes, just a minute. Blake speaking. Oh, why am I good? If you're so old, why? <laughs> what the hell? What are you doing? I beg your pardon, young lady. Oh, uh, may I help you? Is Miss Tilton here? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, he's here. You have a brother-in-law named Johnson? No, sir. Oh, yes, you have. We picked him up at the airport about an hour ago, trying to make a getaway. He had the securities and money on him, taken from this office. And he said, you opened the vault. Now, what about it? All right, take him down and book him.
Dickies. It's the children's. Jimmy Tilton. Hello, Joy. What brings you here? Well, I've been looking for this young lady all afternoon. So, you're the little red-headed girl known as Nancy Tilton. You've been raising quite a rumpus, haven't you? Well? Well, you Lily, why, why don't you say something? Why don't you do something? You don't have to say anything. You don't have to do anything. I know I'm a fraud. I let everyone believe I was related to you. You are not a fraud. And you are related to us. Well, well? She's right, my dear. Nancy Lucas was my wife. So, you see, you are a Tilton. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I'm not. I was a Tilton. I'm a Walton now. Dave and I were married this morning. Come on, good-looking. Now I know I've been wasting my time. <laughs>